Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's having a great, wonderful day. Had a great, wonderful day. However the case may be. Mind blank. <laughs> Hi, how are y'all doing this morning? It is nasty. It is, yeah. it is nasty out here. You probably can't see it on camera, but it is just misty. Yeah, like a mist. It's, 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 it's bad, but it's cooler, so I'm gonna welcome that. We have yet another new animal coming to the homestead, and well, kind of new. Well, I guess it is new. It's new. Yeah. Uh, we we've mentioned it before, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Jeff here because this is his project. <laughs> okay, so um, you know, I guess it's almost in the same kind of almost categories, but. We do have some chickens coming in, and we got gobble gobbles coming in. We got some turkeys. So exciting. Yeah. So the brooder that I made before, the little L-shaped type. In the treehouse. In the little treehouse or clubhouse type thing. We've got some chicks coming because you know we've got like a we want like a wine dot rooster because we're thinking about trying to get the wine dots to kind of hopefully breathe. We really like them. Um, but I figure putting turkeys and the chicks together, I mean that could last for a couple of days. But those turkeys, from my understanding, they're, they're gonna they're gonna get a little bigger, and we don't want them <laughs> competing for the food and everything and kind of stomping over the little chicks. So right, making another little brooder which was kind of needed to do and of course we're doing it at the last minute no, just no, no. like normal no 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 so he complains that i always get these animals in it's last minute and he has to do it and he has to do it. i ordered these three months ago so this is not my fault but there's a lot of other stuff on the schedule and true True, but and still, he had did, plenty of notice. We didn't remember that they're coming until now. So, all right, let's get to it. Hey, look at there. Uh, before we got out here, this little tree house, hopefully there's no kids in it at the time, but they used it as like target practice. There's bullet holes all in it, and look at there. And, and and there's there's the head of a round. So what I'm gonna try to do is is you know me, I don't like to actually go to the store, especially to buy lumber right now. So I'm gonna try to get as much of this. I mean, a lot of this wood is pretty, it's pretty old. But I think I can salvage a good amount of it. Plus, I've got all the stuff that I've milled. So. We'll be using a lot of that today and trying to reuse as many of these two by fours I think that might be good enough to reuse them as well. We're also kind of doing this also it's kind of like a combo because we figured we were going to use this little bottom of the treehouse area adding the extra brooder I'm going to try to put like a little bitty house underneath it because we're thinking about taking Spaz and Dove and moving them out here into a nice little area that they've got a lot more room to kind of go because they're so small. I don't want to just leave them out and about with them, with all the bigger chickens. And of course, flying predators <laughs> and everything else that can just come by and swoop them up quick. If you're new to our channel, Spaz and Dove are our oh. Old English Game Bantams, yeah, and they're yeah. this big, yeah, they're and big. a hawk or an owl can just pick them yeah. up easy. So we have to make sure we have them covered, but they are very good free rangers, so we wanted to give them even more room than what they have now. So yeah, I'm just putting in some boards on the inside of this to attach my floor to because I'm going to have the wall actually go to the edge to sit on this board. So I need to put something up here so I can have my floor sit down on top of it. I 
I don't really need a lot of support, you know, chickens and stuff, they don't weigh much. But I'm mainly getting it more supported for us to kind of stand right here on this one corner because we'll have the bottom part as a chicken house and then up here at the top will be our brooder area. All right, there's the floor, check mark. So, now I need to start putting me some supports to go across here for the brooder for the turkeys or for anything else later down the road. And then that way then, putting those pieces across here is gonna also allow me, I'm gonna run my, my planks up and down so it'll give me the support to also nail to the wall going up as well. Because I'm actually gonna put the wall around. Yes, I know. I still haven't done it on the other side. But, you know, it's a process. So, okay, we've got the floor. We've got, this is gonna be the floor for the brooder right here. And I, I laid them to go flat like this along the, the three and a half width instead of turning them up because like i said it's chickens they're not going to weigh a lot so i don't need a, you know the extra support of it standing on its edge and then up above i've got some too because when i put the outside wall up i need something to nail to and that's why i did it also the flat ways here so i've got more to nail into better and this is going to be the top part of the wall because I'm gonna leave about a six inch gap up here for like an airflow. And if it's even still quite not enough, you know, if I put a little small fan in here, uh, most likely a solar one, then it can draw the air in better than of course having no gap at the top, you know, to bring in some air. Plus it'll also let the hot air kind of escape, you know, during the during the summer months it, it should escape out that was that's seems like it's working up here so okay. all right so now I need to finish out the bottom part of the brooder still to make like the little L so we still need so to come across just with, like this one right just like I did that one over there so I'm gonna have to bring a little support up bring it across and back and around so we'll need to put a support here and a support there. And that also help this bottom part, of course, is gonna be the little chicken house that'll lead out this direction. So these outside walls will be the bottom, will be the walls for the bottom and the top. And then the little wall that I make in here will enclose all that as well. So we're trying to get this all reset up and kind of turn this whole thing into a brooder type thing. Probably also maybe putting in another little house on the bottom here to face out this other way to maybe make as a grow out a grow out area or a sick bay area. If we've got maybe a chicken that might be getting picked on or something, we can move it over here to be by itself uh, until it gets better. A broody a, area. A lot of little different areas, but we figure that's what we're going to kind of do this. You'll get the gist of it when you start watching us get this put together. Yeah. It might not all get finished today. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so I think I've got the frame pretty much done out. We got the L shape again. I made it 
20 inches on the inside this time. Instead of instead of 18 yeah. like we did last time, I figured maybe a couple extra inches might help out, especially with like the turkeys. Uh, I may actually have to put a little bitty step, a little plat extra platform right here because Shauna, I don't think she can get to this corner. So we still need to make, of course, the top. And now I'm going to try to get this floor in and the walls. And so now I've got good boards that attach to the outside boards that will go on the outside. And that will actually be the wall on the back side. And then I'm just going to come in this way. And I'm going to put probably some boards going down, kind of like I did on the other one. And then on the outside over here. Oh yeah, outside over here and here and get the floor. So let's go see what kind of pieces we got to try to do that. I think. I think you took something out of the soap shop you can use. Maybe. We'll see. But so far, getting it all done of a lot of it was all the stuff that I ripped off this old playhouse. And a couple of them were some other boards, I think, from the very first brooder we made, actually. So, I'm pretty happy. Oh, and then, of course, the flooring down here is already the stuff I milled. So, all right. Let's get to it. Whew. Taking a little longer than expected, of course. Pretty much like y'all probably know, every project normally will. Problem is, is digging through and seeing what available lumber I've already got milled that I can kind of use. I already know I got to mill a bunch more. But, ended up here on the outside, what I end up doing is, I've got some like 11 inch pieces that are about a half inch thick, and I've got roughly some 8 inch pieces that are a half inch thick. And I got my little handy dandy little stapler, shoots the regular crown staples they're inch long so that's what I'm gonna use to tack this stuff up and what I'll do is is I'll put this piece up kind of just roughly put up and then Kind of space out these other pieces. We're not being precise here. Oh no. <laughs> Turkeys don't care. And then see what I can do is, is then I'll space these up. I mean, it's a pretty big gap. But see this, will fill in that gap. And so I can kind of like get, get more wood kind of out of it with, without having any, without having to go like to the table saw and straighten up all the lines to get them, you know, perfectly straight. This way, I shouldn't have any daylight coming through, any cracks coming through, because... Or rain. Oh, and rain, wind, you know. And it kind of seals it up in a semi-way. Better than just button them all up together. Yeah, I lose a couple of inches of space I could keep carrying around the whole building, but Works out pretty good, and it's what I got available right now. Like a really wide batting strip. Yeah, that'll work out pretty good. Okay, let me get back to nailing all this together, and we'll show you the end result here in a minute. Okay, so this next morning, I uh, was going to try to show you how to, that I was going to put the um, top on here, kind of like how I did the top on, on the other one, but I really overworked my shoulder this weekend, and uh, it, it, is, it is hurting. So, same concept, little L-shaped screened <laughs> top, little hinge up, 
real good. Wasn't as much as showing you, you know, building just another brooder. Kind of like the concept of doing this brooder and the great thing about doing it was with, well, besides the two buys that came off the little pieces that used to be in here and, and up there on, on this tree house, I got to use all the wood that I milled. That's great. I love it. Uh, this is all half inch thick. And then on the bottom for that the flooring to step on, for, for the flooring, I didn't need to carry it all the way across. I could have probably just this, did this first section, but I used the three quarter inch stuff that I cut. And this was out of that oak, I believe. And I think most of all of this siding pieces was all pine, if I'm not mistaken. And like I was saying, I, I carried it all the way down because we're probably going to make the whole bottom part underneath there is going to be for another little like chicken house that I'm going to carry off the end. That we'll, we'll carry off. I'm probably going to recut this out and, and reshape a door to where we can get into it this way to clean out and, and do things. And then we're going to carry off like a little run in this direction. Mainly going to be for our two little small bantams, you know, those little bitty ones. But we could also use it for getting the new chicks when they're getting older to come out and investigate and know how to do things before we turn them in with all the bigger chickens and stuff. But yeah, I, I loved it. I got to use the wood that, that I cut. Well, this has been a while back since I cut this stuff off the mill. It was great because, I mean, these are almost 11 inches. These are about 8 inches, you know, and right here, I think it's right under 6 feet of board. So, in today's, age, in today's time, right now, that's a lot of money that I just got to get off of a little bit of gas running the engine on that sawmill. But like I said, also, I tacked it all together with those little one inch staples. But then when I did these overlapping boards, I took that coil, coil gun that had the two inch uh, ring shanked nails and popped them in to kind of hold those down. And I'll keep you updated. We'll, you know, you'll always be seeing this. So we'll get to see if I put it up too greenish or anything like that, because then we'll see if it all curls up and makes a big ugly mess. Hopefully it's not going to. And Get ready, because we're bringing something else again. Yes, I know. It's always bringing something else in, bringing something else in. We've probably been doing it a little bit too fast, but I think we can handle doing these. I think so. Whole new excitement with this. We've been really waiting to have these, too. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming maybe in, I think, a week. So y'all have a good and safe one out there. Y'all be careful. Can't wait to see y'all till next time. Later.